Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at post exploitation of Microsoft Windows. So, in this lab, we're going to learn how to perform some post exploitation of a Microsoft Windows target using Metasploit. The Metasploit framework comes with several useful scripts that can aid you in exploiting a Microsoft target. These scripts are usually made by third parties and eventually become part of the Subversion repository. These scripts are to be used with a MetaPredator shell once the target has been compromised. Post-exploitation refers to the actions taken after a session is opened between the attacker and the target. For this lab demonstration, I will be using one virtual install of Kali Linux, one virtual install of Windows 7 Pro or Enterprise, and an established MetaPredator session with the Windows 7 target. We're going to begin this lab by establishing a MetaPredator session with our Windows 7 target. Now to do this, I'm going to be working out of my work folder. So I'm going to right click on the temp folder I have on my desktop. And from the context menu, I'm going to select open terminal here. Inside of my work folder, I have a script called handler underscore tcp dot rc. So I'm going to tell Metasploit that when it launches, I want you to read and use the script that's inside of my work folder. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. So by running the script, I have established a listener on my Kali machine. Now I'm going to go over to my Windows 7 machine and I'm going to launch the payload that is going to complete the connection and give me that MetaPredator prompt that I need. So on my Windows 7 machine, I'm going to go to start. I'm going to go up here to computer. And from computer, I'm going to go to documents and I'm going to double click my payload.exe. And I'll click run. And now, when I return back on over to my Kali machine, you'll see that we do have a MetaPredator prompt. Now, to be able to run these commands as system on that Windows 7 target, I'm going to need to elevate my privileges. Now, to do this, I'm going to have to first disable the user access control on my Windows 7 target. Let's see how I do that. The first thing I need to do is background my MetaPredator session. Notice that I have a session ID of 1 assigned to that MetaPredator session. I'm now going to tell Metasploit to use the exploit windows forward slash local forward slash bypass UAC exploit. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Notice that my prompt changes to let me know that I'm now using that exploit. I now need to tell Metasploit to interact with my MetaPredator session and run that exploit inside of that MetaPredator shell. Now to do this, I'm going to set the session to ID1. Hit enter. Now my Metasploit and my MetaPredator session are both working interactively. And so to run that exploit up inside of MetaPredator, all I have to do is type in the run command and hit enter. And we're back to our MetaPredator prompt. With the UAC out of the way on our Windows 7 target, I should be able to run the get system command and elevate my privileges to that of a system account. So at the prompt, I'm just going to type in get system. Hit enter. And it lets me know that I'm now up inside of the memory of that Windows 7 target running as an admin. And I can show this just by doing the get UID command. So I've zoomed in a little bit on our terminal here so you can get a better look at what I'm doing. And so the first command that I want to run is going to check my Windows 7 target to see if it's running as a virtual machine. Now to do this, I'm just going to type in the word run along with that command check VM. Hit enter. And it comes back and it tells us that the target is a virtual machine and that it is running up inside of a virtual box. The next post exploitation script that we want to run is the get countermeasure script. So with this script, I'm going to check the security configuration on my Windows 7 target. Now, once I've done that, I can determine if I want to disable the Windows firewall or if I want to just leave it as is. So at my MetaPredator prompt, I have typed in run space get countermeasure. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. 
and it comes back and lets you know that currently the firewall on my target is enabled. Now it tells you also how to disable the firewall if you so desire using the NetSH command and we're going to see how we do that next. For this Windows 7 target I'm going to use the depreciated command for NetSH firewall. So I'm going to type in at the prompt NetSH space firewall space set op mode space mode equals disable. Now let's take a look at my firewall currently on my Windows 7 machine before I run that command. So currently you can see that on my Windows 7 machine my firewall is enabled. Let's go ahead and minimize this. And back on over here at my Kali machine I'm going to go ahead and run the command just by hitting enter. But I forgot to do something. I forgot to drop down into a shell first. So to run NetSH onto a Windows machine remotely I have to get into a shell first which is the command prompt on the Windows 7 target. So I'm going to type in shell, hit enter. Now I can run that command. So at the prompt, I'm going to type in net sh space firewall space set space op mode space mode equals disable. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And it comes back and it says OK. Now if I go on over to my Windows 7 machine, I should see that my firewall has been disabled. And it tells you that turn on the Windows firewall, the firewall has been disabled. All right, so that command does work. So to get back to my Metapreter prompt, I'm just going to type in exit. And we're back. Our next exploitation script is going to allow us to have a remote desktop connection with our Windows 7 target. Now to run this, at the prompt, I'm just going to type in run space get GUI. But again, let's take a look at my Windows 7 machine. And you'll see that currently RDP is not enabled. So if I'm going to run it without any switches, I'm just going to be shown pretty much the help menu. So let's see what that consists of. And it tells us that to enable RDP, I can add the dash E switch. So I'm going to bring back up my prompt here. Give it a space and I'm going to type in dash small letter E and that's going to enable RDP. I'll go ahead and hit enter. And it says enabling remote desktop RDP is already enabled. Setting terminal services service to startup mode. The terminal service service is not set to auto, changing it to auto. Opening the port in the local firewall if necessary. Now what's cool about this is that you also have this cleanup script that you can run that will set everything back to the default as it was before you exploited the machine with the get GUI command. And so once we have enabled RDP onto the remote target, we can bring up a new prompt. And at the prompt, we can type in our desktop space, the IP address of the remote target. So I've typed in our desktop, which is a default program that comes with Kali. And I've given it a space, followed by the IP address of my target. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Give it a second. And there is our remote desktop. Once you have completed your reconnaissance and you've gathered whatever information you wanted off of that Windows 7 target, you can now return to your MetaPreter session. And you can just highlight. You're going to copy that script. And you're going to paste it at the MetaPreter prompt, like so and you're going to run it and once you run it it's going to perform the cleanup and put everything back to a default. Now another script that can be very useful in post exploitation of a Windows 7 machine is disabling the antivirus. So to do this we have a script called kill AV. Now I'm going to go ahead at the MetaPredator prompt. I'm going to type in run space kill AV. I'll hit enter. And it says it's killing the antivirus services on the target. Kill AV script has a large number of known antivirus programs that it can associate with and disable, but not all. Some antivirus programs will have to be disabled manually using the task manager on the remote target. Using the remote win enum script, we can glean a lot of information and save all that information to log files onto our local Kali machine. Let's see how we do that. 
So at the prompt, I've typed in run space remote win enum. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. So to get this command to complete successfully, we also have to add a user account, a password, and the IP address of the target. So let's see how we do that. And so by just using the help menu, you can see that we need to add a user and a password and the IP address of the target. So at the prompt, I've typed in run space remote win enum space dash small letter u for the user. And in this case, I'm going to be using the IE user account. Give it a space dash small letter p. Type in the password for that user. Give it a space dash small letter t the ip address of the target i'll go ahead and hit enter once the command completes you'll be able to go up to the saving the report location and you will have a log file for all of the following listed information now the next command we can run is called scraper so at the prompt i've typed in run space scraper now this is going to pull over even more system information to including the system registry off of our Windows 7 target. So you can see where the information is being pulled from on the target. And you can also see that we're pulling over the, the SAM database and the entire registry from the machine. Now another tool that we could run to gather still more information off of our target is the win enum command. So at the prompt, I've typed in run space win enum. I'll go ahead and hit enter. So you can see all the information that is gathered here. So if you would like to look at any of this information, these log files that you have gathered, just open up a fresh prompt and you're going to grab that path that was given to you. You're going to type in CD as I did here and then just copy and paste in the path. And now you'll be up inside of that working directory. You can type in LS and you can see all of the different log files that have been gathered for you in the form of a text file. If you want to view any of these, for instance, if I want to look at, let's just grab something here, let netaccounts.txt. I'll just right click on this, I'll copy it. At my prompt, I'll type in cat, and I'm just going to go ahead and right click, and I'm going to paste that, hit enter, and now I have the net accounts for that remote target machine. And so there's one last thing you need to do before you leave that Windows 7 target. And that is to clear the event logs. So to do this, I'm going to use the clear EV command. And it comes back and it tells you exactly how many files were deleted from each of the event logs up inside of the event viewer. And now that we have completed our post exploitation of our Windows 7 target, the very last thing we want to leave on that Windows 7 target is a persistent backdoor, and that's going to be in the last lab for this section. And so that's going to complete this short video presentation on how we go about performing post-exploitation tasks on a Microsoft Windows machine. You got any questions, you got any concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.